So, Brian, guess what I did this weekend? What'd you do? I downloaded The Leftovers, our podcast. Oh, yeah? From the Springer Mountain Farms Podcast Network. <laughs> did you know we have a podcast? I do know we have a podcast. I didn't know we had a podcast network. I don't it's even know a, what well, that means. Well, I mean, it's not ours. It's Springer Mountain Farms Network. Right, right, right. But we're we on it with delightful little tidbits from our live shows every week. The Leftovers. Yes. The Leftovers from our shows it's every the, week. Yes. Sorry, yes. <laughs> it's a party after the show. But and in case you missed this, you can listen to it. Right. Yeah. With that wonderful sound that we like. Yes. And we do, what's well, the I sound? do know what, what is it is. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you have to listen to our podcast. Fair enough. Um, what are we making this week? We're going to do cilantro lime chicken today. Okay. With yellow rice. So we've got a little turmeric. We're going to actually show people how to make their own yellow rice at home because a lot of people just buy it. Okay. It's really easy to make and it's, in my opinion, a lot more flavorful when you make it at home. Okay. Let's put up a picture of the finished product so people can see that is what we will be diving into in just a few minutes right after this. I'm Kara Kinnear, journalist, wife, host, and a mother of two. I'm joined by Chef Brian Carson, who has over 15 years of culinary experience. Together, we're going to take the mystery out of everyday ingredients you can find at Earth Fair. This and more on today's Cooking with Earth Fair. Welcome to Cooking with Earth Fair, brought to you by Springer Mountain Farms. I'm Kara Kinnear. I'm so happy that you're here with us on this glorious Monday afternoon. If you're watching online, thank you. We appreciate you. And we want you to be just as involved in the show as the chef and I are. So ask us a question via Facebook where you can watch this show on Springer Mountain Farms' Facebook page, on Cooking with Earth Fair's Facebook page, on Earth Fair's Facebook page. Springer Mountain Farms has a Roku channel. There are so many ways. You can catch this live every Monday at 4 o'clock, and we hope that you do. So you can also go to slido.net and ask a question. Just use the hashtag cookingwithearthfair, and it comes right up here on my handy-dandy little tablet. And if you ask a question, you will also be entered to win a $50 gift card to buy Earth Fair. So we hope that you will use that. We love to give things away on this show. So if you're in the store, we're actually in Cumming, Georgia at an Earth Fair. Um, so the people you see are real. They're not actors. They're not paid actors. Um, so you will win this gift card. But also, if you're here, you could ask a question in the store. And you can win all the ingredients that we'll be using in the dish today. So ask a question. Come see Chef Brian Carson and I. Um, there are lots of ways to get involved. So what is this show? Well, we hope it's fun and informative, but also we hope that there's something in your house right now, in your kitchen, that you don't know how to use. We are going to help you solve that dilemma. And the man that does it each and every week is the one, the only chef, Brian Carson. Hi, my friend. Hi, how are you? Listen to that applause. I See? Know, great. It's so exciting because we have a live studio audience. Our crew yep. is ready to go. Absolutely. And we're going to cook something amazing today, just like we do every week. This is episode 16 of season two. I know, I can't believe it. We're trucking right along. Exactly. All right. And every week we tease on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, all Facebook, everything, what special ingredient it is. So we're going to show you that right now. It is... Drum roll. Brrr. Cilantro. Cilantro. Let me get that in the shot. Yeah. Cilantro. All right. And what are we making? So we're going to actually... Use that. I'm going to need that, so don't okay, put it back okay, in there. Okay, okay. So we're actually going to make a cilantro lime chicken today with a yellow rice, and we're actually going to show you how to make the yellow rice from scratch because, in my opinion, it's just as easy as buying the mixture, and it tastes a ton better. Okay. So, well, you kind of shamed me last week on the podcast because I said that I heat my rice up in the microwave, and you were like, don't do that. You're leaching basically everything that's good from yeah, your rice. Yeah, you were talking about the minute bag rice. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, I've changed my ways since last week. I will that's not right. do that anymore. We're going to make sure that we show, if there's one thing that I think it, you can learn from the show, it's definitely how to cook rice. We've done okay. it a ton of times, and we've kind of done it in different methods. So we're going to do that again today. But we're going to start with the chicken because the chicken's going to take some time. So. Okay. I've got a preheated skill, or excuse me, Dutch oven here. I'm okay. just set this. I'm actually going to have you. Scale of one to ten, how hard is this recipe? Ten being the hardest. So again, we're going to. This is going to be right around a four or five. Very easy, okay. but it does require a little bit of tentativeness. So you can't just put it all together and walk away. We're going to show you how to make the rice. We're going to show you how to make the sauce and the chicken itself. Okay. I've got you seasoning, just salt Seasoned. and pepper. Okay. Just some bone in, skin on chicken thighs. These are great. These are going to be the spring you know, spring around farm, of course, star okay. of the dish. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of flour. 
And the only reason that we're doing this is we're going to allow that flour, and we've kind of talked about this before, the flour being a thickening agent. By giving these a light dredge, very light, we're not gonna leave them in there at all. Just gonna toss them a little bit. Okay. This is gonna help thicken that sauce as it cooks over time in this sort of a braise almost is what basically what we're doing with these chicken. This okay, chicken. excellent. So. We already have a question coming through. Beautiful. From Corvette 624. Thank you so much for the question. And he or she wants to know, can you make this in an Instapot? We get this question often. This recipe, I, don't know. I would say yes, totally. Yes. Okay. So this yes. would be something, and I think if I'm correct, the way that the Instapot works is basically a pressure cooker. This recipe already is quick, but you could absolutely throw it in a pressure, okay. uh, in an Instapot. Instapot. You can also, okay. you could also use different cuts of the chicken. I've done this recipe. One of my favorite ways to do this recipe is with a whole bird split. Okay. So if you have a big enough Instant Pot or big enough Dutch oven, that's I would recommend that too. But if you want to get it done quick and easy, chicken thighs are the way to go. Okay. Corvette 64, should I get an Instant Pot? Tell me. I don't know. I think they asked questions last week too. Yeah. Oh, this person specifically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Fan. That's good. I'm, I like it. Yeah. So we've got the chicken in there. We're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let that chicken skin start to crisp up. Do you need this? Not yet. We don't want to okay. put the lid on it. If you put the lid on this, it's gonna create a lot of steam, and it's not mm -hmm. gonna allow that searing process to really take, and us to get some crispy skin. Okay. Because what we're gonna do is, since we're braising these chicken thighs, we're gonna fill that level of moisture or liquid that we put in there up, but not too far, because we still want to have that beautiful crispy skin on the top side. Okay. So when we get that, that's what we don't want to cover that up, because then you get that rubbery chicken skin that nobody really likes. Sure. So, while that being said, we're going to go ahead and start working our rice as well. And this is a very easy, very quick thing that we can do So to enhance flavor. One is toasting the rice. So what we're going to do is, today, since we're making yellow rice, we're actually going to use a little bit of turmeric, okay. which is going to give us the yellow color, but it also is going to give us a ton of flavor, and it does have a ton of great properties for you. So it's super high in antioxidants. It's great for you if you got a cold, the sniffles, sore throat. Turmeric is really good for you. Okay. It's also one of the major ingredients in a yellow curry. So okay. you're going to get a ton of savory flavor Ooh, from it. I'm excited. So what we're going to take we're going to take about a tablespoon of olive oil and just coat the bottom of the pan here with it, and we've got this on a medium heat. And then we're going to take our rice. Okay. And this recipe, we actually want to add a little spice to the rice. So we're actually going to use some mm. seeded diced jalapeno. Okay. So if you want to make this hotter, you could use a serrano. You could leave the seeds in it. I prefer to take the seeds out. It looks better. It feels better. And we really just want, for this dish, I just want that green pepper flavor okay. with a little bit of spice. Nothing super spicy. Okay. So and the take, exact measurements and, and ingredients are on springermtn.com. Right. So you can find Absolutely. this recipe there. You can find all the previous recipes we've done. Also, go back and look at the recipe archives. Make a dish and post it online. Yes. Tag us, Cooking with Earth Fair, and you'll be entered to win another cool gift card to right. Earth Fair. I believe, is it... Well, we're going to start one soon that's worth a lot of money. So stay tuned for that announcement next show. So real quick, just to take a gander at the chicken. So we're getting some color on that thigh there, and you see how it's starting to crisp that skin, and that flour is helping out. We want to just be careful not to burn that flour. So sometimes you just got to move it around in there. Okay. And that also is going to help get a nice fat coating on those chicken thighs so they can sear up too. Okay. Dale Fowl wants to know, thank you so much, Dale, for the question. Do you pat chicken the chicken dry before dredging it? You know, you don't really have to. And actually, if you do, then what's going to happen is not as much flour is going to stick to the chicken. So okay. the moisture that's on that chicken actually helps those things to stick to it. Whereas if we were just going to sear these and do them up, I would say absolutely pat them dry. We'll get that skin super crispy. But because of what we're doing and we're using that flour, we want as much of it in there so that it kind of helps to thicken the sauce. Did you see that people were in a tizzy last week because the CDC said not to wash your chicken before you cooked it? Not to wash it? Yeah. Why'd they say that? They said because... I didn't know people it, were washing chicken either, by the way. I didn't either. And I just kind of was listening to everybody like, oh, right, yeah, that's crazy. Um, but they said it, you know, it splatters. It's just to keep, you don't need to, basically. Yeah. Is the gist of it. Well, I don't know. Tell unless us what you've you had your chicken sitting somewhere that it shouldn't have been for a long time, there mm -hmm. shouldn't be a ton of moisture in the package anyway. Right. You're going to get a little bit of stuff that leaches out over time, but nothing, especially with the Springer Mountain Farms. That's what we, I was going to say, Chef. Exactly. It's always delicious. It is. Okay. Well, it's not, and they don't pump it full of, you know, you look at chickens a lot of times and you'll see on the package it says, you know, saline solution or things like that. When that's really, they take a salted water and plump birds with it so they look perfect and pretty. Right. You don't get any of that. Yeah. 
Hello. Hi. Thank you for joining uh, us. Awesome. So we put the rice in here. If we can get on that camera here, we put the rice in, and all we're doing is on a very low to medium heat. We're just going to stir the rice, make sure we don't really want any color. What we want is a little bit of an aromatic, nutty flavor or smell. And that's going to really, really take the flavor of this to the next level. So on our chicken right here, we're going to go ahead and add our onions. Ooh, I like that. We're going to add our garlic, which you know are two of my favorite things to use. And then we're going to add the rest of that seeded jalapeno that we had. Okay, I'm gonna get out my cool carrot cam. There you see if go. They can take that. Oh. I can take that. Ooh. Ooh. There's a crew in our There's audience. There's a crew Hi, in our audience. Hi guys. This is so fun. Is so fun. Well, that, yep. I wish this had smell of vision. Maybe right. we can work on that next, Matt. Yeah, maybe. We got everything else, right? 3D, yeah, all kinds do. of good stuff. Hi, Paul. So all we've done here is we're gonna let those aromatics kind of soak down. We're gonna add a little bit more fat to the pot right now. And that's just to help get those onions working. That's only the only reason, and just very lightly. It's not we're not going to add a ton because we're actually going to finish this rice with butter as well. So it's going to be a nice, rich, flavorful dish. Okay. So we've got our rice toasting up. These goodies are all getting acquainted over here, and like I said, we're just going to let all that kind of fall in between these chicken thighs and get down to the bottom. Okay, we have a few questions from Facebook. Melinda, hey friend, thanks for watching. Yeah, absolutely. Also, um, Tyler wants to know why put flour? Can you just brown, brown and crisp the chicken and then reduce the sauce without flour? So the flour just helps. So with this dish, because we do serve it over rice, I like that, that sauce that it cooks in to be more closer to a gravy texture. So okay. that when you pour it over the rice, you've got a little sauce to eat everything with, as opposed to having a sauce that just runs all over the plate. Now, got if it. you want to, omit the flour you totally can. can it'll just be a thinner sauce if you want to replace the flour with cornstarch or, or potato flour or something like that to make it gluten free absolutely can i would say stay away from the nut flours they do help thicken but they also offer a flavor, flavor so right. almond or, or you know pecan or any of that stuff in this dish would kind of be off a little bit off sure. putting for me all right thanks tyler for the question Good question. So the next part we're going to do, we, I promise you yellow rice. So we've got toasted rice with a little jalapeno. We've got turmeric. We're going to put, oh, turmeric jumped out on me. Mm -hmm. We're going to put like a half a teaspoon or teaspoon-ish of turmeric in there. Okay. We're actually going to toast that spice as well because in doing so, we're just going to aromatize all of those flavors that are in that yellow, or in that turmeric, excuse me, in that yellow rice. And you, you see put already. any liquid in there yet. I haven't yet. We're yeah. still toasting. Okay. It's just okay. olive oil, rice peppers and turmeric and you see how already that rice is yellow mm -hmm. that's what you want so now we're gonna add salt okay because we got a salt rice water right and then I already have some water right here okay Ooh, I wish got you the guys rice could smell in there. this at home it smells so good and so we're a little bit shy on the water if that's okay I'm just gonna top it off with a touch of chicken stock okay Perfect. What you just add for a little bit more salt and flavor, right? Absolutely. Okay. And actually, there's going to be so much flavor in this, you won't even need to add that chicken stock. I just did it because the liquid was a little bit shy. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add stock to this. And you're going to see, like I told you, we're going to go up just beside the chicken, not all the way. We okay. don't want to mess with that crispy skin. We're going to throw in a couple of bay leaves which is one of my favorite things. And here at Earth Fair, you can actually get them fresh, which is great. A lot of places I've talked about, you get them dry and they're brown and they're in a little container. Sure. These are way better, way better, okay. in my opinion. They have a ton more flavors. So we'll put three of those in there. Okay. Now, this is cilantro lime chicken, so we should probably have cilantro and lime in there, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and right. cover our rice. Okay, we have another question coming in from Amun Bennett. Um, hi there. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks yeah. for asking a question. You guys have um, about 15 more minutes to ask a question to win the Earth Fair gift cards. So keep them coming. Um, you say, I'm currently on a keto diet. What are some of the best low-carb food items that I can get from Earth Fair to incorporate into my diet? Thank you. So keto is one of those things that I don't have a ton of experience with, but mm -hmm. I will say, I think the rules are you can't have carbs, right? And it's mm -hmm. high fat, high protein. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you haven't checked out the butchery program here, it's amazing. The guys back there, if you want sausage or something made for you that's a little bit different than something they don't carry, you can talk to them. They'll make something for you. You can get whole chickens back there. You can get tons of different seafoods and things that I would say are all key things that you would need. As far as supplementing the carbohydrates, I would say I use a lot of things in my house like 
cauliflower rice instead of using rice or mm -hmm. instead of using a potato to, to stay away from those starches um, and yeah. really just get all those beneficial minerals. I would, I would say too, go to SpringerMPN.com and look at all the recipes that Chef Brian has done since we started. And if there's a particular one that catches your eye, ask a question and he's very good at substituting things yeah. in and out so we can make Absolutely. it work for your diet. Thanks for the question. A lot of people are doing keto. My sister did it yeah. for a while. How did it work? I mean, she enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how it worked. Like, I, there's so many food trends and fads, mm -hmm. it's hard to keep up with as quickly. It's like, just as soon as I think I'm educated on gluten-free sure. or celiac, then something else comes around. It's like, oh, well, there's gluten in that. And you're like, right. how? Right. Let's talk yeah. cilantro, since that was our secret right. ingredient. OK, tell us a little bit about it. I know some people have a love and hate relationship with it. By a round of applause, how many people love cilantro here? I love cilantro, so I'm going to clap. Yes? Okay, all right, how many people don't like it? <laughs> okay, everybody loves it here. Yeah. We're all well, on the same You know, time. they say it's like <laughs> one in 12 people, it tastes like soap yes. or whatever, which to me, I am so yes. happy that it doesn't taste like soap right. because I love the way it tastes. Right. And it's kind of funny because, you know, we've mentioned that coriander is actually the cilantro seed, and a lot of people don't know that. So when you buy coriander, because mm -hmm. coriander has like, a fruity pebble kind of flavor oh. to it. So you don't really think about it being associated with cilantro, okay. where cilantro to me is very vegetal, very green flavor. But then it also has that just heightened, kind of pulls the side of the palate, which is why I think it goes well with things like a sweeter sure. citrus like lime sure. and, and the ingredients of that nature. Okay, all right, we have another question from Corvette 64. Thank you, sir or ma'am. Can you use cilantro stems too? Absolutely, so the beautiful thing about cilantro and parsley is that the flavor goes through the stem all the way through. So all of this is usable. And I think I've talked about in other episodes, if you want it to look pretty and you don't want the stem in there because it is fibrous unless you chop it up, sure. like it'll get stuck in your teeth and kind of thing. If you don't want to do that, I cut them off, I'll freeze them just like that in a little sandwich bag and mm -hmm. I'll throw them into soup or I'll throw them into a stock when I make that, uh, right. when I get to that point. Yeah, all right. Uh, but also in this recipe, if you notice, I did just throw whole chunks of cilantro in there because yeah. it's, it's gonna be great. Oh, that's a pretty shot right there. It is. Looks Next good. time I'll open it the other way. So we got our rice. Don't worry about that old wives tale about uncovering your rice. This jasmine rice is gonna cook up quickly okay. anyway. What's so, the best way to keep cilantro fresh? So I honestly, the, the best way is to take a damp towel, okay. like a paper towel is fine. Just run it under the water, squeeze it out, and then wrap it up gently around the cilantro, and then just place it not near the fan inside of your refrigerator because all that cold air blowing on it will make it wilt faster. Okay. Also, if cilantro wilts or is, doesn't look that great, it still has tons of flavor. All right. So you really, unless it's mushy or brown or like can smash or black, it's gonna be great. So as long as it's green and vibrant, you can use it. Okay. And if you ever, also with all these leafy greens like this, if you ever have some and you don't want them to go to waste, put them on like a baking sheet and set them up above your cabinets or somewhere in your house with like some plastic Don't wrap. Don't forget about them. Well, no, you can forget yeah. about oh, okay, it. Oh, okay, you can. We're gonna wrap them in plastic, poke holes in it, okay. and what'll happen is over time, they'll just dry out. Okay. Put a couple towels under them, and then you'll have your own dried herb. Okay. So. Oh, that's nice. Are yeah. you gonna make this for your mother this weekend? It's Mother's Day. Is no. Get your mother something? I already, you know, I'm ahead of the curve. I bought oh. Mother's Day cards for her and my sister like two days ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good job, my friend. I know. That's nice. Points for me, right? <laughs> Man, adulting. Adulting, you're doing it well. No, I'm trying, I'm trying. So our chicken's looking good. The rice, can you smell that rice? I can smell it. You guys smell the rice so out there? Mm -hmm. it smells so great. That turmeric, like I said, brings so many flavors to the table that when it hits your palate with all this stuff, it's just fantastic. Okay, I have another, there's another question, and I love this question, Isra, because people start asking you things just because they want to know things because you're so knowledgeable. So this doesn't really have anything to do with the recipe, but Isra says, He's been reading a lot about juicing recently, or he, is it true that juicing vegetables and fruits can strip away essential nutrients? Okay, so the biggest problem I have with juicing mm -hmm. is if you juice Not a food. carrot oh. or if you juice an apple and all these things, that's great, but what are you getting? You're getting all the sugar, you're getting all the water and all of those liquid nutrients, but you're getting zero fiber. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting any of the stuff that your body actually works. So the sugar is gonna burn off quickly. That's gonna be a simple carbohydrate that's gonna burn off really rapidly. Your body's not gonna have energy, it's not sustainable energy. Whereas if you have fiber, that takes your body a longer time to process and break down. Just like if you buy whole grain bread versus 
enriched white bread. Mm -hmm. Your body pumps through that white bread like nothing because there's no nutrients in it and it's easy to process. Right. But when you have whole grain bread, you've got a complete carbohydrate, not a simplex one, so your body takes longer to break it down. It's you know the same what? reason right. like celery is a negative calorie food because it takes more calories for your body to process and you to chew it than it does than there's actually in it. You know what I always think when I do this, I think, and now if I just sat here and ate 75 apples, like that would, I'd be really full and that would take me a long time. Yeah, but you'd also but just be hopped up on, makes this much on juice. sugar. Right. I don't yeah. Know. So I mean, juice if you I want. Just know how it goes. It's juice if you want to, but make sure you're putting things in there. Like, I I would say blending is better than juicing. What do you so mean like, by that? So like like a smoothie. Oh, okay. So like if you have a smoothie and you're throwing a bunch of kale and you're throwing a bunch of other things in there and you're pureeing it, you mm -hmm. still have the fiber there. Like okay. it's not as fibrous, but you're still getting the fiber. Okay. Make a chunky juice, ladies and gentlemen. Chunky. Well, I don't <laughs> know about chunky <laughs> juice. Do we have any pictures the of fiber. the dishes that some of the people have cooked over the? Yes, I think we do. Media? Ooh, we're getting a lot of questions, too. Oh, nice. Um, this is so exciting. Yes, so we mentioned earlier, we want you to go to SpringerMTN.com, make one of the dishes that we've made, in, and by we, I mean Chef Ryan, has made in episodes past, or you can make this episode. We can post a picture of it, use the hashtag Cooking with Earth Bear, and you can be entered to win a gift card. So please do that. We love seeing them. We have some talented chefs that watch this show, and we're happy that you share your culinary talents with us. Check that out. Oh, that sandwich. Looks it's really good. So I loved this one. We do all sorts of things on this show. We try to mix it up. Picnics. Ooh, that was a really good one. And all of these ingredients can be found right here at your Earth Fair. Okay, another question from Facebook. Teresa wants to know: Can you use any type of rice for this dish, or is jasmine? I don't know why the best? that's doing that today. Oh, uh, jasmine good. rice. We've talked about different rices on the show before. Mm -hmm. Jasmine to me. One, it's very simple, cooks very fast, and has a ton of flavor. Okay. So that's why I use it a lot. You could use brown rice, you could use other rices. They're gonna take a lot longer to cook. Wild rice, things like that. I don't per I don't particularly like wild rice. Okay. Like, I don't like the texture of it. Some people might, and it kind of puffs up, and it's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for this recipe, I like to just stick with a nice, beautiful jasmine. Okay. It's super easy. All right, Our chicken is question, getting Teresa. close to being done. Okay. I'm gonna, I just tasted the salt. I'm going to season it a little bit more. Uh, okay. Is there to here? know? We get this question a lot, Ezra, and I know what he's going to say, but I'm going to let him answer it for you. Is cooking this dish in an iron pot, does it make it better? So, I'm just going to start yes. saying yes. Say yes. I'm just going to say, yes. say yes. I love cooking in cast iron. It's something I've always done. Mm -hmm. I love the flavor it gets. I love the way that the cast iron reacts for you. It holds heat very well. It cooks very evenly. And you can cook it on a multitude of surfaces, so you can use induction like we're doing here today, or you can use electric. You can use um, gas as well. And all of those things work really well. Now I will say that I have found that some recipes mm -hmm. don't work as well in the okay. cast iron because okay. there are some things that you just need to get really hot. Like cast irons are great, but if I'm gonna do a hard sear, if I'm gonna cook fish, or if I'm gonna cook even a chicken breast, a lot of times I'll use a stainless steel pan because okay. I want it really hot, really quick. I wanna sear it and be done. You know what I think? So the cast iron is affordable. But I think, so we're going to start posting instructional videos on some of the mm -hmm. techniques that you use and that you might hear him throw out a chef term that you're not really aware of what it is. So stay tuned for that because we're going to start posting those videos soon. However, we should do a video of how to keep your cast iron pots Oh, how to, usable. How to yeah, how to clean them and store them and all that. Because I think that's intimidating for a lot of people is they rust easy unless you curate them on a regular basis. Right, yeah. right. Well, cure them. Cure oh, wait, them, not, not cure. Curate. You don't need to go buy a new one every time. Whatever. Think so, you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to check these. I'm going to show you a really simple way. Obviously, okay. if you have a thermometer, that's the easiest way. Okay. But we're just going to take the chicken thigh, lay it on his back, and we know we're going to feel around, and we're going to cut straight to the bone. Okay. And see, right there, already, we can see that all that's nice and done. That looks good. And that's what we want to see. Yeah. We're going to put this bad boy right back in there. Okay. Let him get, stay happy with his friends. Okay. I'm gonna wipe my board up. And we're gonna actually get ready to plate. All right, let's plate. And let's pick a winner for our gift card this week. Yeah, real quick, I wanna show you guys this rice though. That turmeric everywhere. So, rice, Ooh, look that at that. so pretty. Beautiful yellow wow. rice. Right there at home, didn't have to buy the box. Made it yourself, three ingredients. I really feel attacked. What? Don't feel attacked. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> 
don't make rice in a bag, y'all. Even if you're a time-pressed mother and you just got to get food on the table, you're leaching out all of the nutrients. Yeah, you know, we talk about that. When you see enriched on a product, yes. that literally means they took everything that was good out of it to the point that they had to put some back. So they enriched mm -hmm. it. It's not that they took something great and made it better. Right. No, they re-enriched it is I'm what changed. it really should be. I'm changed. So I'm, I'm just going to finish the rice with a little bit of butter okay. as promised to make it nice and delicious. And okay. then we're going to get ready to plate. All right, excellent. We want to let you know while we're waiting for that deliciousness to culminate, to curate. Just kidding. It's not a word <laughs> to use. The $50 gift card winner to Earth Fair is Mahood Bennett. Thank you so awesome. much Mahood. for watching and asking a question. Somebody will be in touch with you. Thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who asks questions. We love to hear from you. And I love getting questions on all sorts of topics because Chef Ryan, like I said, is very knowledgeable. So we are happy to help. I try. Oh, I really, really do really try. Pretty, Chef. And I will say, I love that you all ask questions because they challenge me each week. It challenges me to go out mm -hmm. and learn more. Like today, now I'm gonna go learn more about um, keto diets, just mm -hmm. so I can answer your questions better. Yeah. It's, it makes it a lot of fun for us, because it's not just about the cooking and sharing, sure. but it's the pursuit of knowledge yeah. on both our ends and your end at home. So yes. we're always so, pursuing knowledge. That's right. We got our beautiful chicken. Okay. Ooh, that looks, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, and you see how that sauce brought down? Here, I'll turn, tip it this yeah. way. That That's sauce really came down, it's got almost like a gravy texture. That's what we're okay. looking for. That looks really good. And circling back to the guy who asked the question about is flour necessary, that makes a good case for right. a thick gravy-like sauce. Right, and then okay. what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back, onions and all, beautiful That's spoonage. Good. Spoonage, that's a very specific <laughs> chef turn. I like it. We're gonna put that there. That looks amazing. And then we're gonna give it a nice wipe. Okay. And then a couple of garnishes because this is cilantro lime chicken. Yes. We're going to garnish with a little bit of lime juice, fresh spritz right on top. I love that. Thank you to everyone, too, who guessed what the secret ingredient was this week. And then a couple of whole of sprigs, just like that. Okay. Can you use your fancy knife to cut me off a little chicken right there? I sure can. Because I want to get the perfect bite. I'll need your fancy this fork, a, though. Okay, here we go. This is so exciting. Ooh, I got right on the knuckle. Okay, good. There we go. I don't care where it's from. Oh, thank you so much, everyone, for watching this week. We'll be back next Monday live at 4 o'clock right here from the Earth Fair in Cumming, Georgia. We do hope that you will join us, um, whether in the store or online. Ask a question. We can't wait. Chef, those are way – I think you have to make a TV bite. You can't make a huge bite. <laughs> I know. It's like, here's your half a steak. Show <laughs> so them what it, how delicious it was. No, thank you so much. This is delicious. <laughs> I already know it's going to be. Thank you to Earth Fair for having us. Thank you to Springer mm -hmm. Mountain Farm for sponsoring us and giving us this delicious chicken each and yep. every week. Chef Ryan, Carson, and I, cheers. Mm.